Hey, well, thanks for uh, thanks for showing up today. That's like, what are you halfway there? You showed up. That's awesome. We could end the meeting right now. Done. I know. Done. <laughs> it's it's the George Costanza. Like, thank you. Good night. Leave when you're on top. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another Collab Talk podcast interview. I'm here today with Jay. Hey, Jay. How's it going, Christian? So why don't you introduce yourself for uh, the folks that don't know you? There's three or four people out there that probably don't know who you are. I, there's a lot more than that, but I appreciate that. Uh, so my name is Jay Leesk. I am the Director of Strategic Accounts and Solutions for AppPoint Public Sector, specifically focused on the federal market. So customers, uh, U.S. government customers in the GCC, GCC High, and the DOD spaces of the M365 environment. In addition to that, I run a podcast called This Week in Teams. I run a podcast called Buzzkill IT Podcast. And I run a monthly community call called the M365 Government Community Call. Very, very uh, wonderful name there. Um, I'm about to kick off Fed Up, a AvPoint series on federal Mm, IT and and cloud and digital transformation. That's a very inspiring title. That's like uh, it, ha- it it kind of elicits a certain amount of angst going into it. It does. Not started yet. I, like, I have to. I'm already credit. angry, and I'm gonna listen in. What's going on? Right. I have to give credit on that one to Ducks Raymond Sai and uh, Roxy and Debu Madu. Uh, they came up with that as a series, and I'm just I'm picking up where it's left off, and and I love it. I think it's. It's equal parts irreverent and accurate that uh, I think it tells the story all on its own. Well, as you know, I mean, I always also picked up uh, the pieces. Uh, Ducks had started up the uh, Office 365 Hours uh, interview series. So I'm doing those every first and third Wednesday. So I've got one this week. Uh, so it's it's just a it's a great opportunity to go like a deep dive with yeah. a single person, usually one person. Uh, into a single topic yep. versus kind of the AMA format or ask me anything. Yeah. So, well, cool stuff. Well, the purpose of this conversation, the, the reason I asked you over here, Jay, is to uh, to talk about, it's actually, it actually came up today. So I had my every Monday uh, office hours, the Microsoft mm-hmm. Community Office Hours panel. Uh, and there's always one or two questions that are related to GCC that are related to uh, Fed, state, or local, and some of the nuances, the differences there. And we all kind of look at each other. Occasionally, <laughs> we know the answer, you know. Right, right. Um, but it's but it, it's pretty pretty consistently where we punt on those questions, uh, or we assign homework for someone yeah, to go. I and do love your homework out. assignments. That's yeah, it. and uh, yeah, as everyone pointed out this morning, I have a backlog of my own assignments. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but one, so why don't you explain for those that are relatively new, you know, kind of the differences between the those three perspectives? Yeah. Well, so uh, my M three sixty five is the, the the commercial platform, right? Everyone talks about it as a singular multi-tenant solution. And in fact, it's multiple multi-tenant solutions. Um, I know that uh, Germany has its own subset of the technology. uh, And then the United States government has its own subset of the technology. And there are three instances within that. So there is the GCC, which is a FedRAMP, well, it it started out as a, a FedRAMP moderate environment. Um, There's the GCC high, which most people equate to the FedRAMP high equivalency, which is not quite accurate, but that's where their heads go. And then there's the DOD. And really the difference is, (sighs) okay, so (laughs) the GCC and the commercial M365 environment share Azure backbone. So there are overlaps there. The biggest difference is Office 365 is its own instance for the GCC, whereas commercial all share their technology. So there are gonna be some delays between something that's released commercially and something that's released in GCC. Hmm. The GCC high and the DOD don't share that Azure backbone. So in addition to being segregated at Office 365 environments, they have segregated Azure environments. So Active Directory doesn't connect. The app stores aren't the same. Um, and so that really gives you, you know, think of it as the civilian government uh, seg- segment, the civilian um, 
law enforcement segment and then the Department of Defense. And that's really high level. I'm sure someone's going, that's not right. But that's approximately how I would break it down. Are there any others like at the state of any states requested to have separate? I mean, is, is that a thing? I am not aware of any states that have their own, although I am aware that the states are starting to come together and, and creating something called state ramp, which is the state version of the federal uh, risk management program. Um, so the, I know that they're starting to organize, but I have not heard of any states having their own full M365 instance. I know that there was some conversation after uh, some of the announcements for GDPR, so the mm-hmm. you know, o- over in the EU and and other nations which are creating similar standards, South Africa, Australia, and a few others that are doing something, that there started to be talk about states. And I think California was one of the ones listed that had been talking about doing some of their own standards yeah. and considered looking at, but I just didn't know if that there was any movement, if that's something that was yet a reality yeah um you know uh, the gdpr kicked off a whole the for for people who don't know that's the general data protection r um it <laughs> regulation regulation it, it came out of europe out of, out of the european union and it's all about protection of european persons data um, and the trick to gdpr is it's not european data it's european persons data so a European citizen in America, it protects their data too. Um, That kicked off a whole slew of organizations like California creating their own privacy acts. And yes, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something. Which, which by the way, so my former company was independent. I had twice, I had people when GDPR kicked off, or the GDPR, just for Seb Matthews out there, the GDPR um, started officially. I had two EU citizens that reached out and said, hey, we want you to file this report to, to tell me how my data is being used. And I did what a lot of other US companies did is I deleted every record of that person out of my system and said, you're no longer in my system. Yep. No, thank you. Go away. It's it's the easier, it's the easier answer. Uh, <laughs> potentially Right or wrong aside, it's definitely the easier answer. <laughs> yeah, that was it's a punt, but it was a legal punt, and I, <laughs> yes. I stand by it. Well, there's the other thing too is people realize that uh, the other flavors of the environment that's out there, of course, with you know Office 365, which was originally MMS Microsoft Managed Services, which became mm-hmm. BPOS Business Productivity Online Services, and so you had that dedicated cloud. I think there's still like 30 to 40 customers that are out in that wow. environment i don't I mean, it may not be that many but they were the the biggest and the messiest of the uh the moves over to what is now office 365 what rebranded as office 365 and then microsoft's effort was to get the platform up to the place where they could move all of those customers that it would support all of their customized needs or their special needs and yep. uh, my understanding, don't quote me, but it's still that. Oh, like you've been quoted. 30, it's, it's 30 been or so that's out there. And published. <laughs> it's like the, Dave Walsh's team, it was my old GM. So I, I think he still owns those somewhere wow. else, But We need to add that to your next collaboration survey. Are you in so, SharePoint 2003? <laughs> are you in BPOS? Like, <laughs> BPOS. Yeah, because I saw Dave at the ESPC in Dublin a couple of years ago. Okay. And I saw him and he was out you know, speaking at the conference like, you know, hey, I haven't seen you in a couple of years. What are you doing? Because I think he also lived in my town that I lived in back then. But uh, and uh, so I use that opportunity. I'm like, hey, is that still around? Is that still a thing? He's like, <laughs> yeah, it's still a thing. And there's still customers on that. So that's crazy. <sighs> yeah, that's a breathe deeply kind of thing. Yeah. That's that's the I'll say that those companies that got in at that stage. Uh, got a deal where they got Microsoft to be their outsource IT department for a real good dollar amount. So, yeah. 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 But anyway, well, so the question that came up, you kind of touched on it. Um, qu- one of the questions that came up, the one that I remember this morning um, was asking about the marketplace. And okay. if the, so they had seen a bunch of great solutions that were available out in the commercial and were wondering, hey, are these also available within GCC? And we all kind of went, mm. 
Yeah, it's an awesome question. So I, I actually only know the answer to this question because Avpoint has experienced this. Um, Avpoint has a third party tool in the marketplace for Teams, for example. You can go to the Teams app store and you can download uh, MyHub. And uh, Which we had is, a customer. By the way, the second most downloaded app within this the marketplace. So is it really? I'm I'm glad to have that knowledge now. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we had a customer say, I can access your app, but it doesn't do anything. And we're like, what are you talking about? You're gonna access the app. And so what they did was they went to download my they or they added my hub to their to their teams, yeah. but it wouldn't connect because the way my hub is built. Um, it's built to connect to the commercial instance of M365. And this customer was in the GCC. So it can't connect to the GCC. So yes, um, if you are in the GCC, you can see things that are in the commercial app stores. If you're in the GCC high, you cannot. Again, two different app stores. Um, what we've ended up doing, and I, I suspect more companies will do this, but we'll see, is we've created... Um, a side loadable version of my hub that can be pushed out from central IT, but that one is designed to connect to the GCC or GCC high. Um, and, and yeah, so long, so you, long winded answer to say, yeah. So you can still go in and download that from the one location. I mean, I almost imagine that there would be, you know, if there are specific requirements between the environments, the marketplace, you'd almost be able to toggle between that only show me those apps, which are authorized that are certified, whatever, you know, through the GCC. Well, yeah, that would be nice. Um, <laughs> they don't do it at the, at the, they don't do it at the instance level. They do it IT wide. So IT can say you can see this app or you can't, but that requires your IT organization to have the forethought to whitelist or blacklist apps in, in the uh, environment. Yeah. How many people are doing, there's a lot of talk about that early on. Yeah. And, and how many orgs are uh, that you run into are actually doing that? What I'm seeing more than anything else is they're turning off all apps and then they're whitelisting the ones that are approved. Um, it's the easy way out. It's less uh, beneficial to the end user because they can't just go get the Jira app if they want to use that. They have to go through a process to get it approved. Um, but it is the more secure option, I suppose. Because, yeah, IT orgs want that. They want to have that that checkpoint, and that makes sense. That, like anything within IT, if you want to avoid shadow IT efforts, then you yeah. as an IT organization need to be quick to those kinds yeah. of requests. Generally, those requests come because there's a business need. Yes, there are those people that are out, hey, that just looks cool, and I want to try it out. But usually those kinds of formal requests right. are because there's a need that's not being met. And as an IT organization – doesn't matter whether you're in the public sector or, or commercial, find out what's actually going on. Is it yeah. just an educational issue that they don't understand what can be done with the system out of the box, what you know, the, the current capabilities, or is it there's a valid need that's not being met and this solution may need to be? Yeah. I, I did a whole episode on developing a feedback loop with your organization with the users of your organization because if you don't they're just going to go do what they need to do the way they can do it so you have to develop that mechanism for them to be able to say hey i need to do x y and z and and figure out how do we best serve that while keeping our content secure and safe people trying to get their jobs done is like water running down a hill you put a rock in front of it it'll go around yep it, I like that. Is, I life like that. will find a way. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, uh, what was that movie, Evolution, with uh, David Duchovny and Orlando Jones? Ow. That, it's, a, it's a funny movie, very PG-13. But, uh, yeah, that's the life will find a way scenario where Jurassic didn't go. Right, right. Uh, now I need to go put that on my. I'm looking at pictures of who's in that. I need to go watch that. Have you not seen that movie? I have not. Oh, Jay, come on. You, you go, <laughs> go watch it this week. It's, it's on, pretty funny. It's pretty it's funny. on my list. All right. <laughs> That's good. And or, Orlando, I just like what he's the, uh, <laughs> the. My favorite line is where the mosquito gets into his suit. And they're like, I think we're going to have to take the leg. It's like, don't take the leg. Don't take the leg. It's like, no, it's uh, it's moving up towards his crotch. Take the leg. Take the leg. I remember that. That I've seen. Yeah. 
that's that's uh, uh, <laughs> oh, and how they man. retrieve the insect from him is uh, pretty entertaining. All right, good times. <laughs> good times. Although every, every guy out there just kind of goes, oh yeah, yeah, yep. can feel the humor in that one. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, yeah, so that, so that question about the, the, the marketplace then, uh, I mean, is there something for specifically for GCC high? I mean, does the, it, it, you know, it, well, you say that it's not connected to the marketplace. So is there, they have one, their own. Yeah. Okay. So it is just for that alone. So, uh, yep. you know, is that something again, they've gone and they've created that, or is there a specific process to get solutions that are validated for that? Oh, that's a really good question. So they just recently released the third party, um, the third party capabilities in GCC High. And I said they have their own. And as soon as I said it, I went, wait, do they? I can't remember if GCC High has an, a marketplace or if you can only sideload third party apps. I feel like they have to have a marketplace because even the Microsoft apps go through that. But um, I, now, I, now, I'm, now I have homework. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> Yeah, I I feel that that answer is correct, but if it isn't, then Jay is the one that said it. So that's all, <laughs> and I feel good about that and being able to move forward from that now. So. I mean, that's the whole point of having six people on your on your office hours, right? Is is you can blame five other people for the answer to that. We tried it a couple of weeks back. We tried to take a picture with all of us going like this. <laughs> uh, just so we could have like our universal like I don't, I don't know yeah well i mean in all seriousness like I, I know it's a punt but the technology is changing so quickly right now we we've been around sharepoint for years as you can tell by the color of my beard so you know we're used to the three-year cycle of of development yeah like yes there are there are service patches and whatnot but but major releases every three years you have time to to read ahead on what's coming and test it out. And, and now it's like, wait, that, that released when <laughs> yeah. we are right. We're about to raise a generation that has no concept of that. Yeah. And they're just, they're going to be expecting like the, those, those cha the changes. I made that request last week. How am I not just seeing an MVP of this? Why aren't we testing this out already? What's going on? Right. right. What's there, the whole, a whole generation is not going to know what patch Tuesday is. <laughs> Yeah, they're 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 not going to know what it's like to not be caffeinated as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, yeah. I know there's a lot uh, th that's happening. I, I don't know if there's anything. Uh, are you work at all with the with the state and local stuff as well? Less. So my role just changed, which had me. I've I've, I've now got to focus specifically on the um, federal government. Uh, but I, I I've. You know, my my SE team all covers both Fed and state and local, so I do hear a little bit here and there. Yeah, because I know that there I have worked with some uh, vendors that worked largely in the mm -hmm. uh, you know sled uh, area. So a lot of state of California, where I'm yes. born and raised, in that side of it. So friends that are you know partners that are out in the area and predominantly do state of uh, California work, and I just I. I wasn't sure whether there was, again, whether there was an environment out there that was unique to them, whether they, yeah. they left the commercial, you know, what things are unique. What what are the different differences between customers that are in public sector over commercial? Like, uh, do you see it more focused on security and governance? Is that across the board? Are there other differences? What I, I will say, well, one thing that's really interesting to me, our fastest growing product by far christian what do you think it is i mean you know <laughs> do i i'm putting you in the spot right it's backup right well like, yeah of course well right. I, fastest growing i would have thought like uh you know pie but uh, oh maybe maybe i, I don't know Our, what the growth is overall i mean yeah i think backup cloud backup is probably number one so what's interesting about that is the u.s government does not purchase insurance they don't have budget to purchase insurance and backup is an insurance product. So mm. the biggest difference I see is in the public sector side, our fastest growing product is actually our governance suite. Um, 
and while on the commercial side, it's backup because the the businesses realize that without this backup, uh, we have we run the risk of our business going into the ground because of an, of a mistake. In the government, they 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 simply are not uh, encouraged in that manner. And it's not that the IT people like to be clear, it's not the IT people who don't want backup. It's it's that they don't have budget to spend on that. They have to spend the budget on the how do I do more with less philosophy, which is an automated governance thing rather than a backup thing. They also, the other thing that we're hearing a lot of in the government side is they're relying much more on retention policies to ensure things aren't deleted rather than having a backup and recovery so solution. Um, because again, in the commercial sector, you wanna delete things that could cause problems in lawsuits, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the government sector, you don't want to be the person who deleted something. <laughs> so it is a it is a very different mindset. Yeah, that's interesting. You look at each of those pieces. Of course, there's um, how you um, move. I don't like the word migrate. I like the word move because migrate mm -hmm. is a one time where move is more of a change management you know activity that's throughout the life cycle of your content, your data. Yeah. Um, but you you move things. Uh, you have the the governance. You know how things are being managed. Um, you have the um, uh, the the life cycle management, which again overlaps into governance. But it's a lot of things like backup is part of that life cycle management, or can be part of the life cycle it management. Should be absolutely. But, but even it's looked at differently um, from from those things. And how you know what government pays for, and or what you know these entities, these organizations will pay for or not, is really that get caught up in the definitions of those. So to some degree, couldn't we just put marketing spin and relabel things so that it fits within to sell? We're just thinking out loud here. You know, I I can neither confirm nor deny that theory, nor have I, uh, nor will I acknowledge if I have seen marketing. Well, a lot of organizations, but kind of my point there is, so a lot of organizations that get so caught up in the reactive and yes. there's rarely, I mean, traditionally uh, organizations don't like to be, spend money on proactive uh, steps. So whether it be planning, a lot mm -hmm. of governance falls into that. It's really, nobody starts thinking about governance and uh, you know, community management either until things start breaking, That's until right. there's a breach until something falls down, until they witness bad behavior and they want to go in and correct it, then suddenly they want to go in and, and institute all those pieces. So as much as, you know, as vendors try to, as, as people that have been in this space for a long time say, please, please leverage our experience. We've mm -hmm. seen this again and again and again. And as you're starting to build it out, as you're piloting, you have 50, then 100, then 500 people that are using these systems, put into place these policies and procedures, these governance standards, yeah. and start looking at community management, at the the you know the the governance automation steps, the life cycle management pieces, the backup and recovery, because that that business continuity stage, that's that really yep. should be that last thing that has to happen that you you it's there for security. You hope to never have to use it, kind of thing. Yes. You know. Um, but look at all of those different pieces and they're all necessary to feel secure in modern collaboration. That's just the reality. They, they, you're absolutely correct. And, and it's interesting. So not all government agencies are as I've described. We work with a number of, of, of agencies who, you know, they're out there proactively building their intranet. Jay, Jay names, name the ones that are the worst to work with. <laughs> oh, he's frozen. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Thank you for naming so, those, Jay. <laughs> so, so there are there are places that are are proactively looking at this. But you're absolutely right. The number of times I have heard, "Hey, this is a really interesting capability, but we're going to test the waters and see what the problem looks like first. It happens all the time, um, and it's unfortunate because every single time they come back, every single time a year later. That I have literally never ha met someone a year later and they've been like, no, there was no problem. They're like, yeah, you were right. 
you know, er every great SharePoint story um, <laughs> begins with somebody with a catastrophic something or other going on. And it, it, and rarely it's 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 not the like, hey, the server just crashed that like that kind of scenario people understand. And it's a uh, failure to implement or follow a policy or procedure. It's implement to put you know, to to configure correctly for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you have um, with the like the Sony breach, and I know somebody on the inside, a certain Melinda, that gave us uh, some details of that. No, uh, back there when that happened at Sony and explained a lot of it, a lot of the failures had to do with the um, again human failure, the the uh, unwillingness of the organization to go and put certain redundancies in place to review personnel and permissions on a regular basis and so stuff happens yep yeah it, it it is the human error side uh one of my favorite backup and recovery stories is simply an organization who turned on or who allowed you know the citizen developer to use power platform and someone wrote a power uh, a power app or a, uh, a flow they wrote a flow which deleted all of the SharePoint configurations for a very popular SharePoint site collection, a very highly used SharePoint site collection. So all of a sudden, nobody had access to this thing and no one knew why, because it was a flow on the back end that just broke and broke the configurations. And it's like, well, wait, how do we recover this? It's like, well, I mean, if you have cloud backup, we can simply restore those configurations. But otherwise, good luck. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's that it's that disaster story of oh man, I had no idea that was even a possibility. Yeah, that has happened uh, <laughs> yeah, a few times because it, it's again you you think of in SharePoint world and and uh, you know it, I think that Microsoft has kind of shored up the defenses around permissions in a lot of ways. And if you're using you know Teams as your primary interface, you're seeing fewer people that are in messing with touching SharePoint, the infrastructure right. on the back end. But a lot, so much of the history of, of SharePoint, and back when I was a SharePoint admin uh, at a certain company in Redmond, Washington, and owned some of these, these servers, and I had somebody who was dedicated to permissions management. That was his number one function and 80% yep. of his job was doing that for an 1800 person organization was constantly reviewing the request, going and looking at stuff um, on his calendar to know to go in to revoke permissions. It was a manual process to do yeah. that. And that's where most mistakes are. It's like, you know, you're an overwhelmed admin, somebody's trying to do something like, I don't know, give them admin access. You give them that godlike access to the system and then forget to revoke it. Yep. And then stuff happens. Yeah. That's absolutely like it's it's simply a it, it's it like you said it's human error it's and it's constant, uh, and and it's funny you talked about that one person in charge of permissions management as eighty percent of their job, so and that's a what you say eighteen hundred person company uh huh so here I am department. talking to, yeah yeah okay so here I am talking to you know Department of Defense organizations in the millions of users, and they're sitting there going okay. How do we, how many people are we going to need to manage the collaboration features of Office 365? <laughs> well, here's this one guy who does nothing but permissions for 1800 users. Like, let's, you, you have to look at the Microsoft platform differently. And this is a conversation we have constantly. You can't look at it the same way and just throw bodies at it. There's, right. there is nobody has unlimited budgets, let alone the federal government. So I'm, I'm gone off on a tangent. <laughs> well, thankfully, there are third-party solutions which help for that. Uh, yeah, that it's well. I, look, there, there is. I mean, that's exactly where you know half the ISVs uh, got their, uh, you know, their, their product ideas was yes. from trying to do more with less. This was the again coming from the SharePoint background as we we have. Um, one of the things that is just kind of fun to go back over the last decade of presenting at conferences, um, how many customers scenarios that you hear um, as you're interacting, you're presenting. In fact, I was sitting in London, one of my favorites. This is back in like 2012 and um, and uh, Virgil Carroll. So a good friend yep. uh, based in Minneapolis um, with uh, High Monkey Consulting, by the way. Uh, he, so he was doing a presentation. He's a really good speaker. And he said, okay, who's the largest organization? How many? And so kind of your raise of hands. And there's somebody who's like, oh yeah, we've got like, 
you know, 200,000 users or something. He's like, all right. And how many SharePoint admins do you have? He's like, well, there's me. Oh. I've got two part-time guys. And he's like, that's it. And he's like, you know, it, it, so he went on and he talked about it. He's like, the the business business criticality of the platform it says would you compare sharepoint and its importance to your business to like your crm to right. your erp platform it's like yeah it's just like that how many people do you have working on your erp it's like oh we've got like a hundred people that work on that system he's like and you have one dedicated two part-time sharepoint people and some contractors that come in and do some work around it. And you wonder why you're running into some some issues. So like anything, you need to you need to size this. Uh, yep. It's capacity planning includes people. Yeah, it, it really does. And and you said something too, the ISVs learning from trying to do more with less too. One of the conversations I have regularly with the federal customers is is that they have to keep in mind that Microsoft has a third party network as grand as it does because there are going to be, I'm not even gonna call them unique needs. There are simply going to be needs that you have as an organization that Microsoft didn't build into the product. I know, there are opportunities <laughs> right. for you and the partners. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> But so when 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 an organization is looking at this platform, they have to consider, you know, a percentage of their build of their of their budget for third party solutions. And if they don't, I, I mean, I mean, your 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 IT team is going to slowly balloon uh, rapidly balloon uh, yeah. as you realize that you're not hitting everything you need to. Or you're going to have issues like data spills and loss. I, you know. Well, there, there's something that I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the uh, like the Microsoft 365 maturity model, like the concept yes. of the maturity models. And part of that is uh, you, is you have to start with an honest assessment of where you are as an organization. You can't just go in and oh yeah we have that. No, we're good at that. It's like no, you need to go through and really audit your systems and understand where you are and be truthful about where you are based on you know the these yep. various levels there's i think eight different kind of pillars or areas of focus and then it's you know one through five or 100 yep. 200, 300 level where you are along that you need to have that baseline or else you can never have an honest discussion about where you need to go and improve yeah yeah that's actually so one of the things that our team does here at avpoint the uh we call ourselves the assist team the strategic team one of the things that we do is we we sit down with our customers and we try to figure out where are you on the Microsoft maturity model. Um, and and once we figured that out, the next part of that is where do you want to be? Because if we can see those two pieces, then we can build you a path to getting there, whether that's native functionality or Avpoint tools or some other tool set. You know, if you can picture where am I now and where do I want to go, you can actually build the path to get well, there. That's and that's I know it's 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 counterintuitive to a lot of people. Like I want to be 500 level and everything around. It. It's like no, no you, I, don't. you you can't. <laughs> It's like it's like perfection. You yeah. can't be perfect in this lifetime, but it's in a blink of an eye and it's gone. You know, yeah. so it's uh, being consistently at that number. That's it, that's your goal. No, but you look at that and say, you know, being at a 200 level in communication, that's right where we need to be based on our needs and our collaboration style. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our culture of collaboration, but we need to improve in these other areas. So again, yep. do, doing that assessment, but that's again where you need to go and say, look, even using, utilizing all the licenses in our enterprise agreement, everything that's at Microsoft offers out of the box may only get us to that 200 level based on what our that's needs right. are. That's and right. so that's where it might be that you need to go and build, or you might need to go and uh, you might need to adjust your expectations down a little bit um but then you know certainly into the third party realm to uh, move you up depending on what your priorities are yep no you're absolutely right and 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 again it's it's taking the time this is what we talk about in the buzz buzzkill podcast all the time is you got to slow down and you got to take the time to figure out where am i and where am i trying to go in or whether whether you're in the commercial space or you're in the government space, whether you're fed or state and local, if you don't take that pause in that moment, you're you're not going to be able to move forward. Right. 
What's well, exciting stuff? Anything else that's going? On? Oh, I was going to ask you about just the we were, we started off kind of talking about the rate of change yes. that that happens, and that's something where again it's an adjustment. Every week in our live stream Monday mornings, um, we go through kind of the message center updates, and we of course just touch on the ones that are more relevant to the audience that we generally get, and so right. it touches more on the collaboration side of things. Um, I always joke to uh, Mike Nelson, who's a, 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 a data center MVP, um, data center management MVP, and, and he's the one that does goes through kind of the listings of the message center updates. And I always joke, I said, and there's there's all of the other updates that came through, but none of them are of import because <laughs> Mike didn't include it. Only the best of best. The rest of them, <laughs> not important. Don't need to know about it. No, there's just there are so many things that are, that come across. And uh, you know, almost every day there's something new that pops up. Yep. And and so you have to be around different areas, and so you have to pay attention to all of that. I know one of the requests that's been out there for a while, um, and I is to be able to go in and and toggle like the uh, um, uh, the roadmap site specifically around the you know, the tenant that you're in, yes. uh, or you know the version GCC GCC high. Um, yeah, and, and uh, get more and more data. And there's improvements. They're constantly adjusting, uh, improving the roadmap site. Um, yep. But to have visibility into exactly what's happening in the public sector is increasingly critical because it's expanding. It is, and they're getting better at it. So um, first of all, the roadmap does have an ability to look at cloud instance where you can filter on GCC, GCC high, DOD, Germany, or worldwide. That's why I knew Germany was one of them. Um, they also, some of the product teams are doing it. So Microsoft Teams is a really good example. They have their monthly blog of everything that happened in the last month. And at the bottom of it, they have a whole section geared specifically to the government. And one of the things that I've noticed, and this is critical because, again, been supporting Teams government users since Teams came out and hearing the complaints about when's it going to be available to me? When is this feature going to be available? This is years away if we're lucky. Well, starting in the last couple of releases, the last couple of months, we've seen features release for commercial and at the GCC yep. at the exact same time. Yep. Um, so, so following the roadmap is huge and knowing, you know, if my product of interest is, is teams, knowing where they release that information is big too, because you will start to see more and more geared towards the different instances um, like we're seeing today with teams. Yeah. I wonder if we, and there, there, I'm sure at some point we'll start seeing features which are most critical into the, the public sector will get mm -hmm. released into those tenants first um, but before it comes to commercial, like we saw that, I mean, it, it, so it's kind of a prediction. I think it's a, it's a pretty shallow prediction. It's an easy prediction <laughs> to make as it's kind of like, you know, Microsoft talked about for a long time, Hey, you're going to start to see that cloud will overtake on-prem. Right. And, and so then you're going to start to see a lot of features in the cloud that will never be available on-prem. They weren't designed for it. It's not capable there, but yep. likewise, we're going to see versions um, that will be available of different features and things which will come out, I think, in the public sector first. It's it's it's, it's almost like yeah. it's almost like because there are user habits uh, uh, between even mobile devices, uh, between iPhone and other platforms, whatever those things are. I don't know. I don't pay attention. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, and and there will be releases that are iPhone initially, and they'll test those things out. And yep. they'll develop even before it comes to like it'll be a, you know a Teams mobile for iPhone only feature tested out before it's even available within the desktop or Android. Absolutely. I, one of the, I think we talked about this on the M365 Gov community call for the Teams Nation conference. Is the government is actually starting to drive the features that are coming to the platform. You know, three years ago, the government was very much in a wait and see. We, we're not ready for this. We're not ready to put our data there. You're not secure enough. But the government is now, especially with the pandemic, forcing everyone to work from home, the government is now actually driving a lot of the features we're seeing. So I, I'm, I'm not saying from actual insight, but I could absolutely see some features releasing on the, especially like the DOD side, 
before they release on the commercial side as the DOD is pushing for those capabilities harder and harder. Yeah, I think that's a good distinction to make that neither Jay nor I are making any predictions about. We're not calling something that we have inside information on. It's just, we're just, I could see that happening and that would make sense. And I mean, I don't even have the MVP NDA on me. Like I got nothing. <laughs> I, you know, I, I didn't even think about that too, the impacts of the pandemic. We saw that in so many different features out on the commercial side, how that may have impacted uh, the public sector, uh, you know, push as well. But of course that only makes sense. I, you know, it, it's blown my mind. I have a number of friends who, again, having supported the government space for well over a decade now, I have a number of friends on the intelligence side. And these are people who you didn't even tell people what your job was. In fact, my favorite story, small, small back, uh, small sidetrack. Uh, what, I have a friend who moved from Texas to Virginia. They went to their first party. They asked someone what they do, and the person said, oh, "I'm an analyst." And they went, oh, "I'm an analyst too." Which, you know, what are you? What's your focus? And they looked at her, and they're like, "I can't talk to you." And she was, she was a business analyst. So she, <laughs> from the commercial space, is like, "I do requirements gathering," and and they're like, "No, no, like I'm an intelligence analyst. I can't even, no." <laughs> anyway, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> just just it's just it's like. You know Jack Bauer, uh, or or not not Jack Bauer. Yeah. Well, what is, what is it? Uh, Harrison Ford in, uh, in all the movies where he's was it? It was the it? Tom Clancy series. Yeah, yeah, the I Clancy ones. The guy's name. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, embarrassing. Just, I love that series too. Especially I know. Clear and Present Danger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all that. yeah. I okay. Know. Anyway, um, before I went off on that tangent, what was I saying? <laughs> Oh, this is a good conversation, Christian. <laughs> yeah. All right. I like being sidetracked and uh, and tell, telling other stories. And then I was going to do the uh, uh, just the uh, old dad joke of you talk about the intelligence community, not that dumb commercial community. Yeah. That's, that's oh. what it's a slam on, you know, commercial. Y yes. Yes. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So I remembered what it was. Thank you for, for sparking my memory. And, and what it was was – they, these people in the tele, intelligence community who can't even talk about what their jobs are, they have to yeah. go on site to do everything. They were doing two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks in the office doing cleared work, and then two weeks doing unclassified work from a remote environment with Office 365 as the back end. And in an environment where you never thought the cloud would even touch, they are looking at everything they can to declassify anything that's appropriate to have that that capability to work remotely. And so the pandemic absolutely shattered the working norm for the government all the way into the intelligence space. And that's where I was trying to go before I got lost in the analyst world. Is that why we got um, released all the UFO videos? Is that what happened? I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny this <laughs> suggestion. I, I, I want to believe, Jay. <laughs> So, so uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, good times. Well, listen, hey, we're we're just about out of time anyway. Uh, so, folks that want to find out more, where, where do they find you? Where do they track you down? Are you uh, a the easiest, bunker that's hidden away because of all of, all of the public sector stuff that you do? The easiest thing to do is go to j.leask.com. Um, uh, and you can email me at the same. I won't say it out loud, but it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, if you want to look at my podcast, you can go there and link over to it, or you can go to onthespot.tech. Uh, and and yeah, that's that's where you can find me. Super easy. Twitter is Jay Leesk. LinkedIn is Jay Lee. I mean, it's 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 an easy brand. <laughs> yeah, it's not like mine. Every time I complain, I have like a, a doctor's form to fill out, and I realize <laughs> I remind how long my name is. Yeah. Yeah. So really appreciate your time today thanks for uh filling us in and what's happening with the uh, the exciting world of gcc <laughs> it's my i i, I need to I have very like much some, enjoyed the opportunity to discuss it you need to have some sound effects or things that just kind of lasers choo, 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 and... but they've got to be old like 80s style because oh, we haven't I, updated yet. it's like going into like a world wrestling i know it's that kind of you know your jay leaks with GCC, ready or not? Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pre-record that and put that on a thing in my pocket. So every time I walk into a customer site, that's what happens. <laughs> that would be kind of a cool ringer for your phone. Just <laughs> Jay Leaks. 
Answer your phone. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Christian. All right. Thanks a lot.